who the greatest grandfather here was, and Mike, you'll be happy to know, even Abby wouldn't say it was John. So, you other grandfathers that are here, you, you have a shot. So, your own granddad. Hey, Abby. Who's the best granddad in the world? Name them by name. Let's see, what's, what's your opinion? What's your opinion, Abby? I don't have one. I'm not surprised. When, Ask when me who the best been? granddaughter is. I'll bet you can answer this. I can. Who is the best granddaughter, John? Holly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have a favorite. Uh, almost forgot this. I guess I'm like you are with the grandpas. I can't have a favorite. <laughs> Would someone tell John what we've been talking about this week? Plug-in, power-up, and press play. Minecraft. 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 <laughs> How many of you think John plays Minecraft? Easton, do you think uh, John plays Minecraft? No. No? Does anyone here think John plays Minecraft? Yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> John, you play Minecraft? I think they want to ride on my motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're saying Easton has it right. You do, you're not Minecraft. Uh, I knew what it was after you told me this morning. <laughs> <laughs> not a Minecraft. Yeah, we've been talking about plugging in, powering up, and then later in the week we're going to talk about press and play, right? So we're still done in this idea of powering up, and we've been talking about some different ways that, that we power up. And one of the things that we want to do this week is give you guys things to take home with you that you will be able to say for years to come, hey, if I do this, it'll make my life better. Mm -hmm. hey, John's been able to help me with that, with driving, right? It's something you have to do when you're driving. We've had an experience. We have. <laughs> So John, John explained to me I have to watch for brake lights and uh, yes. turn signals, right? I always have to be aware yep. of the person in front of you. Yep. So, so John was able to teach me that. So, uh, we want to teach you guys some things, I hopefully easier. I'm it. kind of curious, how many of you live on farms? Anybody? Well, I want to tell you something. Do you have animals on your farm? No. When I was about the age of most of you, my Uncle Bud told me, this is about power, he told me that if I would go out and lift a calf, and I could lift a calf, if I went out every day and lifted that calf, by the time it was a cow, I could lift it. You think it happened? No. no. What, you lifted every day? I got discouraged after I couldn't lift it. It was, <laughs> okay. it was still a calf. It was just a little bigger calf. Gotcha. The calf, the calf is probably too well, <laughs> what do we call something if we want to describe power? It has how much what? Horns. Horns? Horse. Oh, horse. horse. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Thank you, Christy. You're right. Horsepower, right? Absolutely. Uh, horsepower. Why? Why do we call it horsepower? Because it's more, because as much as a horse would pull. Much as a horse would pull. Yeah, because horses are powerful, huh? Absolutely, you're right. These guys are smarter than you thought. They you? are. They know a lot about horses. Yeah. Well. With Powering Up Day, we're going to talk a little bit about horses, aren't we? You know a lot about horses, Mike. I know a little bit about horses. You know a lot about horses. You know what this is? 
I do. Uh, a belt? It's not a belt. A bridle. What is that, Chloe? A bridle. A bridle. What is on? I do. What's on that? Now what's on what's on the bit there? Yeah, this stuff right here. Hey? What is it? She's not afraid of that at all, is it? It's grass. Chewed up grass, wasn't it? Yeah, it's for their mouth. Yeah. What's that? It's for their mouth. It's for their mouth. John, you know why you put that in there? I would put it on the show. No, the uh, <laughs> lead me, brother. That didn't quite work that way, does it? <laughs> You'll have to explain that to me because we had cows. We didn't have any horses. We didn't have horses. Dad called them hay burners. That goes in their mouth. So you can what, John? You know that uh, much about them. I do. I have. Uh, Actually, used those a little bit. Not too long ago, I used that. Pull on a wagon, and you pull on one side of it, and the horse goes that direction. You pull on the other side, he goes that direction. So, even though you can't move a horse by hand, you can get that little piece of steel. If you can control their mouth, you can control everything else. So, let me ask you this. Or should, should I ask that? How many of them? I should ask it. Yeah. How many of you have trouble controlling your mouth? Yes, sir. Is that all? You don't have trouble, Sam, controlling your mouth? You know I know your father, right? I could ask him about this. Sam. Sam? You ever have trouble controlling? Okay, there you go. Good job with submitting. Megan, just raise your hand. Megan, raise your hand. Everybody has a hard time controlling well, the mouth. A lot like horses, John, if we can control our mouth, we can pretty much control everything. Yeah. That seems to be the last uh, bastion for the devil. Yes, it is. It is. Well, if you guys want to turn your Bibles to number 1293. We're going to be in James, the third chapter this morning. James, third, that's page 1293. What chapter? James 3, chapter 3. You see Catherine? She comes with a survival backpack with her own Bible and lollipops in it. No! But she says it's not a survival pack, but if it has lollipops and Bible in it, I don't know what else. No, what else is And a token. Right. What's up, Christy? How about this? Works for you? Okay, you want to take it? Right, that Good job. All right. John, you want to read something for us? I would love to read something. What do you have to read? James 3, what? James 3. Oh, yeah. Verse 3 talks about bits and bows of horses. James chapter 3 and verse 3. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we could turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they're so large and driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great force to set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Some strong words yes, there, isn't it? Mighty strong words. Yeah, you know, something that jumps out at me because Corey's standing up here. Uh, it says the small member, the tongue, can boast of great big things. Corey and I kind of got ourselves into a situation this week, didn't we, Bailey? 
Oh. Corey and I kind of got ourselves into a situation this week, didn't we? Yeah. Where our, our time's supposed to have something a little bit bigger and we were able to fulfill. Oh yeah, when we won. Yeah. Oh, you able to hear that? Cool. Go ahead and tell the camera what happened, Bailey. Why me? No, Ben. <laughs> Bailey, go ahead. <laughs> okay, um, me and Bailey were up against um, Corey and Mike and Tony. And we happily destroyed them. And we happily destroyed them, yes. <laughs> Is that true, Mike? It's I a true story. You. True story. So you let them win. Did we let them win, Corey? I don't yeah. think so. The best, part of it, the best part of it, I just couldn't do it anymore. I told Michael behind me, I'm like, I can't go any further. You know what I told him? What we agreed upon, let's count down. We counted down, let go. And I fell. They flew. No, that's that was the best part of it. We all. counted down two and we were gonna tug on it. And we got the three and we all tugged and you guys let go. I guess it worked out perfectly. <laughs> what I know for sure is Bailey's feet were higher than his head. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I did a score for you. <laughs> But we didn't really let them win. They were going to win. We just went out with a lot of fun. <laughs> um, but, you know, how many of you guys have had situations where your tongue got you into a little bit more than you were able to handle? Anyone? Oh, yeah. There's some hands going up, aren't there? Absolutely. So what do you do about that, Mike? Well, I hope we learn from it, right? And that's one of the passages that we're looking at. And one of the ways that we can learn or that we can power up is by controlling our mouth, right? Yes. I can think of a number of ways of controlling our mouth. Why don't you give us one and I'll give one. Well, I think one thing we can do is uh, not open it so much. Ooh. I think sometimes we uh, end up talking too much Say things and regret it afterwards. You ever do that? Yeah. Make promises that you can't keep, or promises that you wish you wouldn't have made. So a lot of times it's better just to sit and listen. I think James talks about that too, doesn't he? He does. He does. He talks about that hippo syndrome. You all know what the hippo syndrome is? No. A hippo that has syndrome. <laughs> what kind of syndrome does hippo have? <laughs> hippo syndrome, that's right. You ever see a picture of hippo? It's got a really big mouth, doesn't it? And what do his ears look like? Uh, tiny. Those wee little <laughs> tiny things. I suffer from hippo syndrome sometimes, a lot of times. I think another way that we can harness our tongue and power up by controlling our tongue Corey talked about one yesterday about the kind of language we have that we use, which is very, very helpful. But I'll mention the kind of language we use when we address one another. Um, when, and I think, Corey, you touched on this yesterday, didn't you? About how we talk to each other. Um, you know, we can either build people up or we can tear them down. And it's easy to tear down. Um, it kind of comes natural to a lot of us. Why do you think we do that, Mike? Well, do we think it'll make ourselves look better? I that think that's the big part of it. If I could make you look smaller, I could make myself look bigger. Which, it doesn't work out that way in reality, does it? No. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Yeah. How, how many of you would like to be known as people who build up? I've got a challenge for you. I think we have at least two on the table right now. Talk less, listen more, right, firstly? And make sure when we do talk, it's to pick each other up. Yeah, not show off, right? Absolutely. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. When we crush you at the tug of war. You guys have every right to show off then. You earned that one. You have, a, you have another one, John. Well, I think uh, 
most people that I know have two ears and one mouth. Yep. I think we ought to listen twice as much as we talk. Yep. How does James say that? Well, I'll just read it to you. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. And uh, why do you think he puts anger in there with this? Well, when we get angry, we tend to talk a lot, don't we? We do. We say some pretty awful things. and. Uh, you guys ever heard of road rage? Yeah. What is that? Yeah, sometimes people get, it gets so bad, sometimes people get killed by another person from road rage. And it just, uh, if you keep talking and not listening, anger takes over and bad things happen. Well, if you guys remember, we talked about one other thing yesterday. It, it was about wisdom, right? And James, this chapter in James kind of ends with an idea of wisdom, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And, and it ties together this idea of powering up and, and how it is to power up and tying our tongues right into it, doesn't it? If you're still there in 1293, I think we're going to look at verses 13 um, through 18. Would you like me to read that? Go for it. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, and this word wisdom is in quotes because it's not really wisdom. This wisdom does not come down from heaven, but it's earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. I'm going to let you read the good part of that. Oh, man, you are so kind. So that's the things the world tells us, right? Beating up each other, basically, like we talked about. But here's the good wisdom in verse 17. But the wisdom that's from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere, and a harvest of righteousness is shown in peace by those who make peace. So I'll let you conclude in a moment, but I'll give you one last point on these verses. And it's a phrase that we talk about in our household a lot with our children. Um, and it was one of the phrases in there was a lot of good stuff, but open to reason. What's that mean? Anyone have an idea what open to reason? Tell me, Ben. Being able to compromise. Being able to compromise would be part of that, yeah. Uh, being able to listen and think about some, what someone else says, right? right? Which may lead to compromise. You know what we're tempted to say a lot when an adult or someone else tells us, hey, don't do that, or that's not the way it's done? Sorry. Sorry is a good one. How many of you are ever tempted to say, I know? I, I say it. You do. I don't say it all the time. <laughs> You're not tempted. You just say it. Yeah. Hey, hey, you ever say that, John? I know I do, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and I know I do. Um, but you know what happens when you say that? And we talk about this in my household a lot. All learning comes to an end right there. There's no chance to get any smarter. There's no chance to learn anything. There's no chance to better yourself. It ends right there. Get rid of that phrase. Be open to reason. And I'm going to conclude, just kind of embellish that a little bit. One of the things that people tend to do 
if uh, somebody does something that you don't agree with, and I'm looking at Megan because she knows exactly who I'm talking about here. That's stupid. <laughs> you ever say things like that? What happens when you say that? There might be a really good person that just wants to get away from you. They might have some really good things to share with you that you will never hear because that cuts off communication right away. So I would just encourage you not to do that. We think things like that a lot. Well, that's just stupid. End of conversation, end of friendship. Uh, probably be a lot better off to say, why do you think this? And listen. Great advice, great advice. So guys, as you think about powering up this week, think about using your tongue to power up and help those around you. Uh, as we close, after John's prayer, we're going to ask John to pray, but don't jump up. We have some instructions for you before we move on to our next phrase, or phase, okay? <clears throat> Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for these uh, wonderful surroundings here, for nature that you've created. Thank you for each person that's here. Father, I ask you to bless them. Thank you for Mike and for all the uh, adults that are here working and uh, just the care and love and concern they have for these young people. Father, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus, the uh, avenue of prayer that we have through him. And we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Sing.